Welcome to another Klein adventure. On this trip, we're heading from the Gold Coast to Lightning Ridge. We left the Gold Coast about 3.30 in the morning. By the time we got to Cecil Plains, the sun was just starting to rise. Cecil Plains is just west of Toowoomba. Mooney is a rural town in the western downs of Queensland and has a population of 189 people. St George is on the Boulogne River, which is reputedly an excellent fishing site for fish such as Yellowbelly and Murray Cod. St George has a population of around 3,000 people. We turn left here on the Carnarvon Highway and heading straight for Jiren Banji. Not far out of St George, you're going to turn right and head down the Castle Ray Highway. Deer and Bandy has a population just under 600 people. And they have this fantastic park length for both residents and tourists. Making our way to the small rural town of Hebel, which has a population of 63 people. Another great example of the character in Outback Pubs. It's only 69 kilometers from Hebel to Lightning Ridge. There's so much to see and do in Lightning Ridge, make sure you get to the visitor center. We stayed at the Big Four. All the facilities were fantastic and clean, and it's only just down the road from the hot pools. Most nights they have entertainment here in the undercover camp kitchen. We head to the main street to see the character and history of this opal mining town. Trudy and Richard Malock lived in this little minivan in the early 1970s whilst digging opals. Lightning Ridge is famous for its quality black opals. Unlike ordinary opals, the black opal has carbon and iron oxide trace elements in it, producing the most sought after opals in the world. We head out to Jack's camp to see the beer can house. Everyone starts to arrive to watch the sunset. These holes are built to extract all the debris from down below. Mm -hmm. 
getting ready to watch the sunset. We returned to camp for a nice fire. The next morning it was minus one, even put ice on the windscreen. But it was nice to head over to the artesian baths and watch the sunrise. Head back into town and we're going over to a mine tour called the Chambers of the Black Hand. This mine goes down for about 12 meters. This opal mine was created by local opal miner and artist Ron Canlan. His love of opal drew him to Lightning Ridge in 1982 in hope of finding his fortune in black opal. Unfortunately for Ron, his mine didn't produce much opal, which is when he decided to open it for the general public. From here he conducted tours in his opal mine while creating an underground sculpture gallery for all visitors to enjoy. Nathan, he said, I just kept following it, Daryl, because I thought sooner or later nature's got to stuff up. But after 22 years of trying, it just wouldn't stuff up. Basically, that's his words. <laughs> Time to leave Lightning Ridge and head to Stanley, the big emu. Stanley was built by the local community and has a time capsule in his body. It will be open in 50 years in 2063. We head down to Kambara before heading up to the Glengarry Hilton, then the Sheepyard Inn and finally staying the night at the Club in the Scrub. From Kambara, we head out to the highway, turn right and head up about 21 kilometers before we reach our destination. I arrived in the afternoon just in time for lunch at the Glengarry Hilton. You need a good half a day by the time you head around to the Sheepyard Inn and then back up to the club in the scrub where I spent the night and then left early the next morning. The Glengarry Hilton puts on great meals and has a fantastic bar. We leave the Glengarry Hilton and head over to the Sheepyard Inn. This is a one circle road that takes you around. You can come from either direction.
leave the sheepyard inn and head over to the club in the scrub. Over in the distance is your free camping area. You'll be very surprised when you walk into the club in the scrub to find it's an actual RSL club and you've got to sign in. Once you're in, grab a beer and wander around and check out all the cool paraphernalia. The club in the scrub is also a licensed golf club. There is toilet facilities here for your camping, but there is no showers. I leave the club in the scrub and travel the 65 kilometers down to Walgett to pick up Ando. Walgett sits on the uh, Barwon and Amoy rivers and has a population of just over 2,000 people. The surrounding area has a population of just over 6,000 people. About a kilometre out of town you'll find this free camping area that has flush toilets and showers. We top up with fuel before heading out to Burrowina. Coming into Burrowina, we pass the Barwon River, and just over on the left hand side is another free camping area. Barrowina is one of the most historical, significant places in Australia and perhaps the world. An elaborate network of rock weirs and pools which stretch for around half a kilometre, the fish traps were constructed to catch and store fish as they swam upstream. Estimated to be over 40,000 years old, these ingenious rock configurations are believed to be one of the oldest man-made structures on earth. We leave Barrowina and start heading to Mount Oxley. You turn left and head down Tarcoon Road. When you come to this sign, you turn left to Mount Oxley. You stop in this farmhouse and see the farmer and he'll charge you a small fee. I think it's $30 a night to stay at the top of Mount Oxley. The views were amazing. We even picked up the boys coming from Sydney on the UHF radio. We headed over to the camping area and looked at the views towards Burke.
And I was looking for a feed in the barbecue. Time to leave Mount Oxley. Hope there's no oncoming traffic. You wouldn't want to lose your brakes along here. Thanks for watching and don't forget to watch our next episode from Burke to the Flinders Ranges. And again, thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe.